Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Basically, I'm gonna take you along with me for like a little real-time Bible study. So I'm gonna sit down and explain to you what's been going on. So basically, I am a hardcore overthinker. I always have been. And I think that it tends to come out even more when I'm stressed or I just have a lot on my plate. And like I was talking about in my wedding planning Q&A video, I feel like there's some days I don't feel super stressed with wedding planning. And then there's other days where I feel very much stressed and just overwhelmed with all the things that need to get done. And something I've noticed in those times when I am feeling stressed out is that I'm just very prone to overthinking. Because like I said, I always am normally and then even more so in the stress of that. And so in all of that, I feel like a verse that God keeps bringing me back to is the verse that talks about taking your thoughts captive. You've probably heard that phrase before that we are to take our thoughts captive as Christ followers. Um, but I realized I didn't really know a ton about the context of that verse or just the rest of the verse that that phrase sits in. And so I looked it up and it's actually in 2 Corinthians 10, three through six. And I've been reading through just the whole verse, that whole little section um, at the end of my quiet times every day. So if you've watched my quiet time routine videos, you know that I go through like a different Bible reading plan. But at the end of that every day, I've been trying to read that verse and just meditate on it. And usually when there's a specific verse like that, that I feel like God is bringing my attention to, or it's something I need to work on or just remind myself of, one of the things I'll try to do is memorize that verse and just really ingrain it in my memory. Memory. And then I'll also try to study it further and just unpack it more to really understand the meaning. And so basically for this video, I'm going to take you along with me as I spend some time studying and just meditating on that verse. And so hopefully you can kind of see what that process looks like. And then if you also happen to struggle with overthinking like I do, then maybe whatever I learned from this passage can also be encouraging and speak into your life. So I've got about an hour. Tyler's going to pick me up at like 645 it's what time is it now six um, I just finished up work he's gonna pick me up at 6 45 for a little date night but I'm just gonna spend this next bit of time until then digging into this passage so let's do it so I mentioned how when I'm trying to meditate on a verse and just really understand it deeper one of the things I will try to do is memorize it so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually write out the verse on just like a little piece of journal paper so that I can attach it here to my mirror as I'm getting ready during the day I think I pretty much have it memorized at this point but this is just a fun way to make a nice little visual reminder and make it all cute okay so here's what the passage says it says for though we walk in the flesh we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So now I'm just gonna rip out a piece of this journal paper and write that out. So I got that verse all written out and put on my mirror over there. The nice thing is, is that is usually where I get ready. So as I'm sitting there doing my makeup or doing my hair or whatever, that's usually one of the few times during the day where I kind of like pause for a little bit instead of just letting my mind kind of run circles with all the things I need to do or things I'm tempted to worry about. I can look at that verse and remind myself to take my thoughts captive to obey Christ. And so the next thing I want to do is do a little bit of a deep dive study on that verse. If you've watched my Bible study with me videos, then you kind of know how I do this, but I like to use this scribe Bible journal and it basically walks you through a Bible study method called SOAP. So you write out the scripture, you list out observations and notes from the commentary a lot of times I'll do. I like to use the Enduring Word commentary app. It's free and I'll make sure it's linked down below. So you write out scripture, do observations and kind of notes and all that stuff, and then also interpretation. And then you do application. So how does this truth that I learned from this scripture about God, how does it apply to my life? And then finally you close with prayer. 
so you pray and you talk to God about what it is you learned and this journal really just walks you through that process so I'm going to use it to do a little bit of study on this verse Okay, so I went ahead and wrote out that verse. Again, here's what it says. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So the first thing I usually try to do is to just wrap my mind around what this is saying. And so I'll just kind of read through it a couple times and try to break out what it's saying. So it's saying here, we walk in the flesh. So we're in, you know, flesh and bones, but we're not waging war according to the flesh. And then it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So I was looking through the Enduring Word commentary app and it was talking about how Paul is referring to spiritual weapons here, particularly the ones he's already addressed in Ephesians 6. So if you watched my Ephesians Bible study with me series, you know that Ephesians 6 covers the full armor of God and it talks about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is what it's spelling out here in this app. And so essentially this is talking about spiritual warfare here. And Paul is giving us the reminder that we're not just fighting according to the flesh, but we're fighting in the spiritual realms with these spiritual weapons. So the first note I wrote down there is that the weapons of our warfare equals the spiritual weapons or the armor listed in Ephesians 6. So Paul is saying, though we walk in the flesh, we don't wage war according to the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare, these spiritual weapons, they have divine power to destroy strongholds. And so what is the purpose of these weapons? The purpose of these spiritual weapons is to destroy strongholds and to destroy, in the next sentence, arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. So what are strongholds? According to the Enduring Word commentary, strongholds here are wrong thoughts or perceptions contradicting the true knowledge and nature of God. That's really important, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. So basically what it's saying here is that there's a truth about who God is, a truth about his character and nature, and what needs to be destroyed is anything that contradicts this truth. Any thought that tempts us to believe something incorrect about the character and nature of God, because it says we destroy strongholds and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And that's where that famous verse comes in, that famous part of the verse that says, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. And so it's basically bringing every thought we have, not letting it run wild and create this worry or overthinking, but taking every thought captive and aligning it with the truth of what we know to be true about who God is. And so I feel like there could be the question, you know, what does this have to do with worry or with overthinking? And the truth is that when we are worrying, there is some aspect of God's character that we're not remembering or that we're not seeing correctly. Maybe that he is a provider, maybe that he cares, maybe that he is in control of all things. There's some aspect or truth about who he is that we are neglecting to remember when we worry. Same with overthinking. For me, overthinking oftentimes is tied into what other people think of me. And so when I am overthinking, I am often maybe forgetting what God thinks about me or what he says is true about me. And once again, truths about him. So I put, what needs to be destroyed is any thought that tempts us to believe something untrue about God. And how are we destroying it? Once again, we're destroying it with the weapons of our warfare. And again, the weapons of our warfare are those things listed out in Ephesians 6. So the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, 
helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, that first thing there is the belt of truth. And, you know, the breastplate of righteousness that is living in line with the truth. And then it talks about the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. That's referring to the word of God. And so how do we fight or destroy thoughts that are untrue about God or thoughts that tempt us to believe something untrue about his character? It is by being rooted in what the truth is. So I put again, we destroy thoughts that tempt us to believe something untrue about God by being firmly rooted in what the truth is. This makes me think of Romans 12 too, a verse I quote a lot. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So basically being consistently in scripture, reading scripture, knowing truth about God and letting that transform our minds, letting that align our thoughts with truth. So there's this idea here of correcting untruths, and there's also this idea here of taking captive or bringing order to these unruly thoughts. And I think this is where I go and I tend to overthink. My thoughts are just going everywhere. And this is what this verse speaks to, is to take every thought captive, to not just run them around wild, but to take them captive to bring order to them. So I'm gonna look up this definition here of this word captive. So the definition of captive here says to be imprisoned or confined. When a thought is imprisoned or confined, it can't just be running around sparking all these other thoughts, but it is confined, it is contained, meaning again, it's not gonna create this ripple effect that is often what overthinking is. And so we take the thought captive and then here it says to obey Christ. So to obey him, to be in line with what we know to be true about him. A note from that on the commentary here says thoughts of lust, thoughts of anger, thoughts of fear, thoughts of greed, bitter thoughts, evil thoughts. They are a part of every thought that may and must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so once again, anything that falls outside of the truth of who God is and how he has called us to think and live, any of those thoughts must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so I wrote that down again, that any thought that goes against the truth of who God is must be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And then for application, which really starts like right here, I wrote out some examples of ways where I have tendencies to have thought patterns that do go against this truth of who God is. And so I wrote out what that temptation is to stray from that truth and sort of a truth that I can replace it to when I catch myself doing that, a way that I can sort of take those thoughts captive and in alignment with truth. And so the first thing, and again, probably the biggest thing, is when I worry about what others think. And when that happens, the truth I've given myself over here to replace that with is the truth that my identity is not found in what other people think about me and that I ultimately can't control that. But this truth here from Galatians 1.10, to care more about pleasing God. So I'm going to read what that verse says. So Galatians 1.10 says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And so the truth I want to remind myself of when I'm worrying about what other people think is that if my ultimate focus is pleasing people, then in that moment, my focus isn't on pleasing God and that's where it should be. The next thing or way that I'm tempted to have thoughts that are not in alignment with the truth of God is when I'm stressed, overly just stressed and focused and worried about to-dos, just worrying about all the things I need to get done. And a truth I want to remind myself of when this happens is this truth here from Psalm 127. I wrote some notes here about it, but I'm going to just read the verse because it'll make more sense. But this is a verse I found a while ago, and Tyler has actually been spending a lot of time on this verse as well and has encouraged me to just go back to it, so I'm going to read it to you. Okay, so here's Psalm 127. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. 
eating the bread of anxious toil for he gives sleep to his beloved or he gives to his beloved sleep. And so it's this idea here that unless God builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. And so it's this reminder that God is ultimately the one who is building the house. And now it doesn't say that we shouldn't labor. Our labor and our participation is still required. So this is not a call to laziness, but it is a call to remember that while we labor, God is ultimately the one who builds the house. And so I don't need to eat the bread of anxious toil, sitting here stressing, letting my thoughts run wild, about all the things I need to get done and having stress because of that, I can simply faithfully work and trust God to be the one to build the house. And so when I start to catch myself stressing about things I need to get done, I've given myself this truth here from Psalm 127 as a way of taking that thought captive to obey Christ. The third way I wrote down that I can have thoughts that are not in alignment with truth is right here when I'm tempted to dwell in frustration over what someone did. And so when I'm tempted to do this, the truth I've given myself here is that I am to forgive as Christ forgave me. And there's a verse here from Ephesians 4 I'm going to read, so let me pull that up. So this verse says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And so this truth here is that God is a God of forgiveness. He has forgiven me. And when I'm tempted to dwell on what someone has done to me or something that somebody did that frustrated me when I'm tempted to dwell on this, I have this truth here as a reminder to be kind to one another. That is what I am called to, to be tenderhearted and to forgive as Christ has forgiven me. And so that is the truth that I can use in this scenario to take captive that thought. So there's so much more we could dig into with this verse here from 2 Corinthians, but this is where I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna spend some time in prayer now, thinking through the things I studied, and again, just praying through these different ways that I can apply it in my life, and continue to work also on memorizing this. So that is all for my little real-time Bible study video. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I do when there's a verse I feel like God keeps bringing my attention back to or a verse I'm just really wanting to meditate on. And I hope that this was helpful to you and encouraging to you. If it was, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Side note, I just have to say, this smoothie is so good. It is frozen bananas, spinach, almond butter, vanilla protein powder and almond milk. It literally tastes like a peanut butter milkshake, but it's all healthy and it's green. So I just had to share that. Also these smoothie glasses are adorable and always make me so excited to drink my smoothies. They're listed on my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below if you wanna check them out. But anyways, comment down below any new things you learned about this verse or any takeaways down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one, bye.